This is the 5 a.m. Miracle, episode number 485. Productive Flow, 10 Strategies to Reset and Optimize Your Daily Rhythm. Good morning and welcome to the 5 a.m. Miracle. I am Jeff Sanders and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. My goal is to help you bounce out of bed with enthusiasm, create powerful, lifelong habits, and tackle your grandest goals with extraordinary energy. In the episode this week, I'll break down what a productive flow is, why it can become your new best friend, and how to reset your daily rhythm to achieve productive flow more often, even if you're currently far from where you want to be. Let's get to it. Your productivity can easily be amplified exponentially. You know, I often remind myself of the common phrase to strike while the iron is hot because that's when the magic happens. You can get so much more accomplished in a short time if you tap into your flow state, stay truly focused, and then optimize your highest levels of creativity. When those things all come together, that is magical. That is, I would argue, miraculous. Now, this week, I want to focus on focus. That's a big part of this, but more specifically to focus on flow. A productive flow is an ideal state to get things done. It includes everything from blocking distractions to optimizing quantity and quality, usually in a time-bound block on your calendar that has the potential to produce phenomenal results, oftentimes results that otherwise would never be achieved at all. Now, to define the term as I see it, productive flow uh, from the 5A miracle sense is going to be an almost unconscious state of being where you lose track of time while executing at your highest levels of potential. I'm going to say that one more time. Really think about this, this concept as I go through the episode this week. So productive flow, this kind of ideal state we're striving for, is an almost unconscious state of being, meaning that when you're in it, you don't even realize you're in it because things are flowing so well. Now, in this unconscious state, you can lose track of time because you are executing at your highest levels of potential and you're doing so in such a way that you are totally engrossed in the activity, that focus is not even a thing you're thinking about, you just are in it. That's the idea. This is what I strive for often when I'm doing my best work is I want to find myself in those zones or in the zone. Uh, Oftentimes that happens for me while recording the podcast. It can happen to me on a nice long run at the park. It can happen working on a, a writing project or really anything that allows me to oftentimes do one activity and do it well and have a lot of depth to it to really dig in and see the quantity, see the quality, experience what those results can be. And then when I lift my head up at the end of this productive flow session, I just look around and think, wow, what just happened here? That was incredible. It's those moments that I want, honestly, as often as I can get them. Um, I would argue in my recent kind of months of, of living and working, that has been very difficult to come by which is what kind of brings me to the episode this week. What I want in my life is more flow, but I haven't had it. I've been, what I would argue, is just off my game recently uh, due to a series of repeated illnesses, thanks to my young daughters, uh, injuries, thanks to my very ambitious training program for this ultra marathon I'm working on. I have basically lost my normal rhythms, my routines, my norms. They're just thrown out the window. Recently, I just I haven't had my really great Jeff Sanders moments that I I tend to thrive on, right? These productive flow moments that make me my best self, they seem pretty distant at the moment. And so my question to myself this week was, well, if I'm not where I want to be, what am I going to do to reset? What am I going to do to get back to those rhythms that really define the way that I want to live? Because most of us live you know, day to day in a pretty rhythmic manner. It's not Groundhog Day to the sense that every day is exactly the same, although it can feel that way. But what we're looking for here are rhythms that feel good, 
rhythms that bring about our best selves, that amp us up, that allow us to produce better work over time, whether that's work for your job or work on your personal growth or work for your family. I'll put work in quotes here. Just your tasks, your goals are being achieved, but through those rhythms, through those routines that once again bring about your best self and hopefully can be achieved through these productive flow sessions. So this week, I want to focus on the strategies that will help you to get there. If you have been in a funk like I've been in, if you've been off your game, if you've had illnesses or injuries or stress or you know major life events that have just sent your schedule out the window, we want to get back on track and hopefully get back on track in a way that produces the best results we can get. And so these strategies really focus on the fundamentals. Uh, If you've heard this podcast before, you know there are certain topics that I just harp on, and I do so because they work. One of the things that people tend to lean on when a life isn't going well is a silver bullet, right? We want the easy, quick fix, or we want to somehow learn new information that we don't currently have because we think we're missing something. And what I have found to be true is that nine times out of 10, we do not need new information. We do not need a silver bullet oftentimes because there is no silver bullets. There is no best answer, but there is a best set of strategies to pursue. And those strategies are so, well, they're so obvious in so many ways, right? So simple, so fundamental, but they're fundamental because they work. They're the kinds of things we can go back to again and again because they always produce the kinds of results we want. So as I go through these strategies this week, think about the productive flow you want to achieve, but also think about the norms for you that tend to work, your fundamentals that tend to bring about your best self. Now, of course, I have my own. I have my own ideal day, my own way of living. And so you're going to hear these strategies through my lens of existence. Um, this is just my perspective. But I want these to be kind of a springboard for you to then bounce into your own set of rhythms, your own set of norms that make you just awesome every day. So let's begin at the top here with the number one strategy that I lean on almost all the time to reset myself and get back on track. And that is what I'm calling early morning cardio, or essentially for me, that means running on the trails. I absolutely cannot get enough of this time in my life to be out in nature. It's it's one of those things where recently I got back into marathon training that I mentioned at the top of the show. It's why I got injured. And one of the things I noticed right away was that when I reset myself in the sense of getting back into a norm of working out consistently to train for a race, I tended to choose to go to the park to do so. I tend to choose hiking and trail running as my normal go-to activities. And I do those for a number of reasons, but one of the things that struck me recently was that it's not just running that I like to do, but specifically being in nature, being out in the woods, usually by myself with no distractions, just moving through the the forest with the leaves and the trees and the roots and the rocks and the squirrels and the deer. Like I'm just out in the elements. There's something really powerful about that. And something that I have found to be extremely rejuvenating and extremely powerful for me to kind of forget all the nonsense of my regular life. I really get away. And even for only 30 minutes or an hour, that's really all it takes to just kind of get myself in a new environment that lets all the noise die down. And then when I get back to normal life, when I return back to my regular work, I have a new refreshed perspective. Yes, because I've been working out, I have this sense of like invigorated, you know, increased heart rate, and I'm feeling healthier. But I think it's more. There's more to it than that. Right? There's more to it than just running or just working out. It's it's being out in the woods early in the day. And so one thing that I tend to lean on when my sleep schedule is not set well, if my fitness feels off, if I'm getting kind of cranky or I'm just frustrated by what I'm doing. I always turn to going to the trails because it just fixes all these problems. Um, There is a T-shirt that I have never actually designed, but one that I would like to uh, from a phrase that I heard years ago, which is, I have 99 problems and running solved 112 of them. I think it's hysterical because it's completely true that for me, being outside and running on the trails will solve the problems that I know about. It will also solve problems I didn't even know I had. And I find that to be completely true. 
right? Not every run is going to be perfect. Not every single time out in the woods is, is magical, but the consistency of getting back to that again and again really does reset who I am and makes me more of the me I want to be. And so if you've been in a funk and you wake up tomorrow morning and you go move your body, this could just be a walk around the block. This could be something that just says, I'm going to focus tomorrow morning on, on physical health, on mental and emotional health, and I'm going to benefit all of those by just simply getting up and moving and hopefully doing so in a, in a place that's a little bit new, a little bit more naturific. And if that's true, I think you're going to experience such a better reset to then have that be the foundation for the rest of your day. Now, having said that, to kind of pair with this early morning cardio strategy, uh, one thing that also works really well is just simply frequent walk breaks throughout the day. If you're trying to get yourself in a new mental space, a new physical space, up and moving, just getting up and going somewhere is oftentimes the best way to kind of break out of your shell, right? To just like disrupt those systems. You know, one thing you'll see as a, a trend, these strategies, is this disruption idea. We're trying to figure out, well, if I'm if I'm stuck here, if I'm not operating well, what's it going to take to get into a better set of rhythms? How am I going to shift and pivot to somewhere better? Well, you have to change, right? That's what this is. It's change, and change is often disruptive, and disruption is powerful. It absolutely is, and oftentimes it's something we don't want to do, right? If, if I tell you the, the answer to all of your problems is go run really vigorously in the woods, most people's response to that is, no, thank you. <laughs> like, no, 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 that's that's not for me. I hear that all the time. And I'm totally used to that, and I get it, because disruption and change is hard, right? Moving your body in a vigorous way is, by the nature of what that is, it's difficult. But that's where the results show up, right? You don't get results doing easy things. That's just not how life works most of the time. If you want to honestly reset your rhythms, disruption is the key. And early morning vigorous exercise, that's pretty disruptive. Now, frequent daily walk breaks, that's a little easier, a good place to begin maybe. And then you can kind of work yourself up to a more vigorous workout down the road. So for this first strategy, the recommendation is physical movement, ideally early in the morning and ideally in nature. That's the goal. Strategy number two, and this one's going to be no surprise to 5A Miracle fanatics, which is to go to bed early. Getting great sleep is life-changing. I always see a very common pattern between poor sleep and a poor attitude. If I get bad sleep, the next day is bad. If I get great sleep, the next day is like exponentially better. It just really is a phenomenal thing. And this is not rocket science. This is not a shocking news, right? Go to bed early, get great sleep. But if you're not doing it, it's time to get back to that rhythm. It's time to get yourself in bed at a reasonable hour. Now, what that time is for you, I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that whatever time you're going to bed now could probably be 30 minutes earlier, maybe an hour earlier. Start there and see how that impacts the sleep that you get. So tomorrow morning, if your alarm is set at a bright and early time, it won't feel so painfully early. This is one thing I've said multiple times, even just recently, I was interviewed on a podcast and someone was asking me about the 5A miracle concept and what it means to wake up early and how these things operate. And one thing that I say frequently when I'm interviewed is I don't want you to take advice from a guy on a podcast or some random dude on the internet. What I want you to do is to do things that work for you. Because if you listen to my advice and take it at face value, you're probably going to hate me and you're probably going to hate 5 a.m. That's not the goal, right? The goal is for you to get results that work for you. And from my perspective, going to bed early, getting great sleep, and waking up and then moving your body right away, that's it. Honestly, that's my entire brand in a nutshell. If you want to read my books, that's great. If you're listening to this podcast, awesome. 99% of what I talk about could be boiled down to just go to bed early, wake up early, and run. Ta-da! <laughs> that's it. That's the foundation, right? That's the fundamentals. That's where everything starts. And if those things are in place, it is amazing what else can be true. So that's it. Start there with some great sleep and some great exercise. 
Now, to take this up a little bit higher, a little little notch further on the belt here, strategy number three is to drink a lot more water and then in the process of doing so, back off on the other substances like caffeine, alcohol, or anything else you may be taking where you think uh, this thing is usually going to work against my goals. Right, we all have unhealthy habits in, in you know in our diets. We we make choices that are probably not the best for us. It just reminds me once again of those fundamentals that there are things that we can easily do. Right, there are things we can easily do. And drinking more water is so simple and so straightforward, and the results are profound. Right, I literally have a liter of water with me wherever I go, and I have it right here. It's this big Nalgene bottle. I carry it with me everywhere I go. This thing is in my in my pictures on Facebook. You'll see me with this water bottle wherever I go because it is my best friend. Drinking water is, it's just it. And when you do it, you can break out of those mental funks. One thing I've seen about uh, being off of my systems is beyond having poor sleep or maybe bad fitness or being stressed out is that I tend to lean on things like have another coffee, right? Or stay up later, uh, do an activity like watch more Netflix movies or something. But when I really think about it, what I'm actually trying to do is to feel healthier from the core, from the inside out. And there's nothing more personal than putting things into your body. And water is one of the most like fundamentally easy things to consume that literally gives you benefits within seconds. You feel better almost instantly. And if you drink quite a bit of water, the benefits are a little more profound. And so for me, amping up the water intake is always a great solution. Fourth strategy is to read a lot more or read a lot less. <laughs> You're going to see these strategies kind of baked in through the rest of this list here, which is that one thing I know about disruption is that when you're doing something and you do the opposite, you get the opposite results. Seems to make, make sense, right? Well, if you've been reading very little, which has been my life story in the last few months for sure. Uh, my girls have kept me very busy at home, so my reading schedule has been a lot less ideal for me than I'd like for it to be. So one thing that I like to do when I want to disrupt my system is to do things I don't usually do. So right now, because I'm not reading, I'm going to read a lot more. However, I've had seasons of my life where reading is just baked into my schedule and it's all that I do all the time. But anything that you do repeatedly will become a habit, which can be good or bad, but habits can also become ruts. Even really great habits can become ruts. And so the intention around disruption, the intention around a reset, is to start somewhere new. It's to let these things shift in a new direction, and you're not going to get that, that dramatic change that you want if you keep doing the same things you've always done. And so even something as wonderful as reading might need to take a pause while you're doing the reset and then you bring it back a little later on when things have settled down, you have a better rhythm in place, and then the reading feels fresh again. You're going to learn something new in a new way because you're now in a new place. You're a new person ready for new information. So wherever you are right now, just do the opposite and see how that works for you in terms of your personal growth, in terms of your rhythms, and definitely in terms of disruption in order to get to a better place. Fifth strategy, and this relates probably directly to the early morning cardio, is to do what you don't want to do. Whatever you fear, whatever you're thinking in the back of your mind right now about some task in your to-do list or some life bucket list that you've been avoiding, whatever that thing is, this is the time to do it. Once again, disruption is about doing things that change the norm. Well, if you've been avoiding something or there's something that you're fearful of or something you've been just procrastinating on, just putting off over and over, when you bite the bullet and just jump in and do it, you will feel so much better. But it's incredible how that works. I mean, I will, I'll use this episode of the podcast as an example. I've been really busy recently and my girls have had lots of illnesses and our family has been a little bit messy. And so one thing I did was I shifted and delayed a lot of my podcast production and that got on my nerves, right? Because I have a schedule that I want to stick to. I have a batching schedule that I want to stick to to produce my content in the way that I want to do it. Well, that got thrown out the window recently. It totally got just like ditched on my calendar. And so I postponed doing this episode. But now I'm here doing it. 
I'm here. I'm recording. This is happening. I'm in the moment. I'm doing the thing that I was postponing, the thing that I was delaying. And I feel better because of it. This is what happens when you do the thing you said you just don't want to do or the thing you've just been putting off. The feeling of accomplishment afterwards is this massive sense of relief. They're like, finally, I did the thing I said I would do. Uh, That's the first emotion. But the second emotion that comes in that I love so much is that sense of motivation to say, well, wait a minute. If I just did that thing, what else could I do? What's the next thing on the list that I've been putting off that I could go tackle? And then all of a sudden, you've created a sense of discipline, a sense of ambitious pursuits that are going to push you forward in a way that otherwise wouldn't happen. There is one strategy I've discussed before in the show that I think needs more attention, which is the idea of avoiding the number one thing. Recently, I discussed in the show this idea that you might have, let's say, 10 items on a list, and you might do numbers two through 10 which sounds productive. You did nine out of 10 things today. That is awesome. Look at this checklist. All these boxes are are checked and you did a great job. Except you didn't because you didn't do number one. That was the only goal for the day. Number one was the thing and number one didn't get done. So who cares about the rest of the list? This is a a difficult challenge because what's happening here is as a mental block of you saying, I don't want to do the hard things first. I don't want to do the hard things at all. Number one usually is hard. Number one usually is a kind of thing you're scared to do. But number one is also the thing that brings about the best results. It's the thing that will disrupt your system the most. It's the thing that will cause you to get back into a rhythm that's actually more productive, more successful, and more fulfilling than what you're doing right now. Whatever you fear, whatever number one is, that's your next move right there. Number six is to do what you're great at. So this might relate to number five and doing your fears, uh, but I have seen that something is is more true than not, which is that if you want to feel emotionally better, if you've been an emotional rut or maybe your mental health has been struggling and you were trying to figure out how to just get your mind right, get yourself back on track so you can do better work. When you do things that are easy and things that are fun and things you're naturally talented at, that brings about so much more confidence and these like positive endorphins that kick in. You say, wait a minute, I'm not failing at these things. I'm not behind schedule like I thought that I was. I'm not struggling in the ways I thought that I was. I have skills and abilities and talents. I have value to provide. I am worthy and good at things. Like these are the kinds of thoughts and emotions that pop up when you do the kind of work you're naturally good at that produces great results. And this could be in any area of life. It could be work, it could be personal, it could be health and fitness. It doesn't even matter. You just lean on the thing that brings about the kind of easy, quick win, we'll call it, but in a way that's going to amp you up to go do more of the work that needs to get done. It's essentially a snowball effect where you're going to start with something that just gets you moving. Because if you've been in a rut where you're not moving, if that's been your version of being stuck or needing a reset, is that just you're in the sludge, in the muck of life where it just feels like nothing's ever taking place and you want to move the ball forward doing anything, well, then start with doing anything and make it easy and make it successful and make it fun and just go do it. Now, I was thinking recently about this kind of these certain phases I find myself in. You know, phase one might be uh, nothing's taking place. I'm not productive. I've been very lethargic, very stagnant, very distracted. Uh, It's a place where productivity is almost non-existent. And of course, we don't want to be there, right? It's kind of what we're talking about this week. You want to reset those kinds of, of bad norms. Well, then phase two could be a place where you're doing something. You're just going to randomly, kind of arbitrarily be really busy. You will pick the numbers 2 through 10 on the list and just do anything. And obviously, this phase 2 example is way better than phase 1. Doing anything is better than doing nothing. However, it's not as good as phase 3, which is to intentionally prioritize the things that matter most and spend your time directly first thing in the morning doing those things. That is the 5 a.m. miracle to wake up on purpose and do something that matters. That's it. And that's going to happen if you shift your life, if you disrupt your systems to move in that direction and make sure that is the priority. That when you look at your to-do list on any given day, there is only one thing. And when that one thing is completed, you could then consider number two, but not until number one is done. 
And so when you do things you're great at, you move yourself in this direction of just activity, you can then over time begin to get better at this. The skill of productivity will be improved and then your ability to prioritize and be disciplined to do what matters, it becomes easier. You can then actually wake up and do number one and it won't feel hard. This is the goal we're going for. It actually will feel more effortless. You know, this example of me waking up and going for a vigorous trail run It sounds challenging if you're not currently running. If you're not currently in great shape, that kind of activity just sounds painful or could, right? But if you're already in great shape, it sounds fun. It sounds exciting. It sounds fulfilling. It sounds like an adventure. Those are are two totally different examples, right? Your opinion on the exact same activity can shift radically based upon where you are in your life. And so we're trying to get from that sense of dread to the sense of excitement and enthusiasm. And that pivot can be made sometimes by simply doing things you're great at to build that sense of momentum, that snowball effect, that motivation that leads to you doing bigger and better things. Number seven, uh, this is one I have been toying with that I would argue I'm not very good at yet or one I want to improve on, but I think it's important, uh, which I'm calling to alternate between isolated focus blocks of time with social time. In other words, you want to intentionally bake into your calendar time for alone time that's focused and direct towards executing your highest level tasks. And you're going to be very effective and you know, you know the worker be at the highest level where you say, I know what I'm doing. I'm going to set out to do it. My focus block of time is, is on the calendar. Here I go. And you put your head in the sand. You do the work and you feel good about it. And that's step one. But then step two is to say, well, now that I've had this alone time, I'm going to go intentionally be social. I'm going to hang out with people that I love, my friends, my family, my coworkers, people that I want to be around. Uh, The intention here is not just around random people or people you don't like. The goal here is to have this juxtaposition between alone time that is focused and high quality and social time that is intentional and high quality and brings about the benefits you get from these two things. I bring this up because one thing I have seen recently is that when I get into a rut, When I get stuck, especially as someone who works from home, usually alone, a lot of my life is spent by myself. Now, you could argue that's done on purpose, and I I prefer it that way, which I think most of the time is true. However, when I get quality social time, it's amazing. It's like a whole new world of possibility because it feeds me in a way that alone time just can't. Human connection matters. The internet and podcasting and all these virtual tools are wonderful, and I love them, and my entire career is based on them, and that's great, but that's not what life is. Life is a human connection. Like That's what we're going for here. I mean, this podcast is me talking into your ears, which it is a personal connection. That's a wonderful thing that we get to have now in this world, but nothing beats face-to-face. Nothing beats being closely connected with another person that you love. And so if you are able to, so if you you found yourself in a rut, if you're in this place where you need a reset, you want more flow, even more flow at work to execute at a higher level at the office, you're going to be better at that if you're emotionally connected to people that you love. This is just how we operate as human beings. And so if you're, if you're lacking that, like I have been recently, well, then intentionally prioritize that and see what the benefits really can be for you. Number eight is to set boundaries throughout the day. This is more practical in the sense of one thing I know to be true for me is that if my life is off a little bit and I want to reset things, that if I force myself into something I don't want to do, oftentimes by the simple nature of having a deadline with a timer, it will force me to act in a more urgent manner. And when you're under the gun, right, you have to move quickly, get to this next thing, make it happen, go, go, go. Sometimes that sense of urgency can be enough to force you to focus, execute, get something done, feel that sense of progress and go on to the next thing. Oftentimes what I'm looking for in any given day is that sense of accomplishment, that emotional kind of pat on the back that says I'm doing something now. 
which kind of goes back to those phases earlier of, you know, pick anything and do it. This is a little more intentional, though, because it says I've chosen an activity on purpose. I've chosen this next time frame for a reason, but I'm not going to let it drag on for a long time. There's going to be a time frame attached to it, a deadline that's very clear. I will execute, I will finish, and I will move on to the next thing. That level of productivity, you get to that point where things are mapped out with that kind of clarity. It is more productive. I don't tend to like to operate that way on most days. I think it works really well for a few days, but then I personally need a break. I love variety. I love flexibility. It's I mean, part why I love working for myself from home is I can do whatever I want, whenever I want, which sounds great on paper, but in reality can be a big hot mess. And so for someone like me who has to choose his own schedule, I need deadlines. I need timers. I rely on them to keep me focused. Because otherwise, what's going to stop me from wasting the entire day on a task that may not be the most important? Now, you may be at a job or in a lifestyle where someone else may dictate your time more so than that. But even if that's true, timers and deadlines will keep you focused in the work you're doing, and they will push you forward in a way other things just can't, especially with this idea of a productive flow. If we're going to get back to this main concept here of you having the sense of flow where things are moving well, I know it is true for me that a focused block of time where I am choosing one specific task and I'm going to dig into it well, it's going to be more highly executed and feel better for me if it's not an unlimited amount of time. Now, I mentioned this idea of a productive flow being in the sense that you lose track of time, and that can be great right? But there's still a deadline. It still has to end at some point in a reasonable manner. And that's going to work better for you uh, oftentimes than another strategy of just aimless nonsense. Let's call it that. Number nine is to change your environment. This kind of goes back to the idea of going for a run in the woods as opposed to a run, let's say, in your neighborhood or around the block or at the gym Changing your environment has a profound impact on how you view yourself and your current state of being. So if you can work in a coffee shop instead of at the office, or you can you know, go for a workout in a new place, or just go eat at a new restaurant in town you know, tomorrow night, whatever the case may be, when you shift what you're doing and where you d- you're doing those things, it will change your perspective and it will help you to, once again, disrupt your norms. Disruption is powerful. Changing your environment is one of the most powerful disruptive tools you have at your disposal on any given day. Because oftentimes that groundhog because oftentimes that groundhog effect of everything feeling the same is because it actually is. <laughs> because you're literally doing the exact same thing in the exact same place, in the exact same way, day in and day out. And that's just not fun for anybody, right? That's not, at least for me, I don't want that. So my intention is to change my environment, to disrupt my norms, to find myself in a new place, think in a new way, add in more creativity, and then achieve the goals that I want to achieve. So if you need an environmental shift, take it and do so if you can multiple times a day with new possibilities at every given turn, work in a new place, eat in a new place, work out in a new place, shift your norms. Finally, the 10th strategy is to end your day with a powerful and intentional decision. I love to focus on how your days begin, right? There's obviously a strong focus on waking up early, doing something that matters to you first thing, having a strong foundation to start the day. And that has worked well for me for a long, long time and will for a long, long time from now. However, the biggest, I I will call this weakness in my own personal calendar is how my days end. I get pretty haphazard at the end of the day. I kind of get mentally aloof. I'm either tired or stressed or just want to kind of you know disappear from the, the difficulty of the day, let's say, especially having two young kids, put them to bed. Things get a little exhausting late at night. And generally, I just want to lay on the couch and watch TV. That's my norm. And it's not a good one. It's not productive. This is me talking to myself here. Jeff, don't do that, right? It's, we, we know we have our own tendencies that aren't as effective. And one thing I know to be true is that the end caps matter. The way your day starts and the way your day end, those things are extremely powerful. And then things in the middle can be a little more messy and that can be okay. And this is true for a lot of things. If you start strong, 
and you end strong, the odds of the middle being strong as well is extremely high. And so if your morning routine is nailed down, you've been doing the 5A miracle for a while, things feel good there. But your evening routine is struggling, it's kind of weak, and there's not a lot going on. My challenge to you, let's say, would be to pick an activity that you could do in the evenings that is even a little more intentional than before, a little well, a little more intentional than before, a little more, we can call it productive, but maybe just a little more fulfilling and would end your day in a way that you feel good about because that's going to set you up for success the next morning in a more powerful way than simply just kind of letting the day fall off at the end and you watch TV till late at night and things just don't, they don't feel emotionally good. I know that productivity is a logical thing, right? Checking the boxes is logical, but don't kid yourself. All of this is emotional. Being in a rut is emotional. Needing a reset is emotional. Ending your day on purpose with a strong evening routine is an emotional activity to end your day feeling good so tomorrow morning you can wake up and also feel good and have that sense of success and motivation baked in. So I'm not going to tell you what to do at the end of your day. But what I am going to recommend is you choose an activity on purpose that you feel good about, an activity that's not mindless, an activity that's not simply just letting the day end, but you actually do something that means something to you. You know, the the underlying kind of foundational principle of everything I've discussed here is intentionality. Everything is based on living your life on your terms because you chose what these things are. Intentionality is making a decision. It's not simply letting things happen. It's not being reactive. It's not putting out fires and simply saying, my gosh, my life is just a mess. Look at all this. We all have those moments, right? We all feel those ways. I have felt that way recently. But I know that what works the best is shifting out of that phase of reactionary, woe is me, the world is on fire, and I'm just screwed. That's not going to be the effective uh, mentality or strategy to get you out of that into a place where things are working the way you want them to. And the way they work the way you want them to is you choose, you make the decision, you be intentional and say, here's what I want. Here's my plan to get it. Now let's go do it. It really is that simple on paper. Of course, it's way harder in execution. Life is messy sometimes or all the times. That's not correct English. Anyway, you know my point here. Be intentional, live your life on purpose, get the results you want, and do so in a way that actually is enjoyable, right? Once again, this is an emotional game, but one that can be played in a way that allows you to feel really good about it. And of course, that is the goal. And for the action step this week, go break up your current rhythm. Add a little disruption to your schedule. You know, oftentimes the best solution to getting back on track is to blow up your current systems. You don't have to start over, but it may help tremendously to do something out of the norm. So cancel tomorrow's plans. Break out of your shell. The best ideas and opportunities can come from shifting gears in a dramatic way. And this can lead to a reset of your rhythms and ultimately help you get into your ideal productive flow. JeffSanders.com slash 485 is the place to go with episode notes. And of course, subscribe to this podcast in Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Uh, They use a follow button, so click the follow button there or subscribe in any other app you use. Also, go to JeffSanders.com slash subscribe to see all the apps you could pick for all your podcasting pleasure. That's all I've got for you here on the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast this week. Until next time, you have the power to change your life. And the fun begins bright and early.